Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Command Center, where we like to put our favorite commander, maybe even yours, front and center. And you know we can't do that without those three dirty letters. EDH. I thought it was Subway. I know that's more than three <laughs> letters. But <laughs> close enough. Sub. Yeah. I thought it, was, <laughs> thought it was a sub. All right. Uh, let's 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 keep this train going. Uh, I don't care. Please let the people know what EDH stands for. Well, it is amazing that you guys jumped in because everybody who plays this format knows what it stands for. It stands for enraging, demented, and humiliating. That's right. We were looking at some past sets from the standard and seeing everything that was standard legal. He's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Why is this a mythic? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you guys explain to us, but we're about to go on a little rage and rant and tear about why are these cards mythics? I see commons that do way better than these. So, but before we go down that happy brick road, we need to give a shout out to one of our patrons. That's right. We always want to give a shout out to a patron when they join a mana squad. And today, who are we shouting out, Derek? Today we are sh shouting out Jacob Jardell or Jakob Yardell, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. And their favorite commander is Aminatu the Fate Shifter. All right, you shut up. So I'm going to explain Aminatu. <laughs> Aminatu <laughs> is a, a precious little uh, precious little uh, planeswalker. And you you better leave her alone. So she's going to stab you in your sleep like <laughs> 75 <laughs> times and then blame it on the, like one of her like parents. Uh, so Aminatu is the Esper uh, planeswalker that mm -hmm. you can play as your commander. Okay. Uh, she comes in. You can, uh, her, her, her first ability, you can um, look at the top card of your library, put one back on the top. Uh, second ability, uh, she can blink one of your own permanents. Uh, third ability, minus six, uh, switcheroo. Everybody's boards either shift right or shift left. This is a little girl that you're supposed to like drop kick at the beginning of the horror movie. Have y'all ever seen the orphan where the girl gets her face like literally like just kicked off? That's what needs to happen at the second that you meet. Look, children are terrifying. Human children are the scariest <laughs> things in the world to begin with. They but are. when they show up looking with like a veil on their face and bugs surrounding them in a swamp and they're like, hi, you're my new like daddy or mommy. Like, no, no, no. That means they're going to either steal your soul, chop you up into little pieces, or they've already done that and you're just in some sort of hell where they're like remaking it happen again. First, first of is, all, she is sweet, innocent, and adorable. This is the chick who's in the same Girl Scout troop as the girl from The Ring and Megan. We don't play with this. I don't want those cookies. <laughs> <laughs> you got a point. You got a point. All right. Let's, what what we an doing? awesome commander. Thank you, Jacob, for supporting us. Sorry about the tirade. I, I, I love the commander. Yes. <laughs> so what we were saying is we were looking at these cars and there were some great, amazing cars from all these sets. Let it not be twisted but then we're looking at these mythics and we're like wizards what were y'all smoking i'm gonna need everybody from rd to get the pee in the cup because this is ridiculous because these are the ones where you open a pack and we all have that feeling with master sets but even looking at just these standard sets where you open a pack you're all excited you see a mythic and then you read it and you're like honestly you could just throw another uncommon in that slot and i probably would have been just as happy like i don't know what this is, why this is here it's like opening a christmas gift to see his so see a socks or a subway gift card i'm not letting that go <laughs> so let's go down the line and everybody can give their two cents about mythics that should not be mythics all so, right so, yeah we'll start with you yeah so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look at this and as i read this out it may more make more sense to me as i read it aloud because when i looked at this card i was like what huh but it's a spectral adversary. Uh, it's one in a blue uh, spirit. Uh, this came out in Midnight Hunt, but it has flash and flying. When it enters the battlefield, you may pay one blue any number of times. When you pay this cost one or more times, put that many 1-1 one -one counters on spectral adversary, and then up to that many other target artifacts, creatures, or enchantments phase out. So I get what it's trying to do. It's like a little tricksy, kind of like protect maybe your board or get something out of the, off, off the board that you may not want to see. Uh, but, I mean, you got to pay one in a blue that number of times for the number of targets you're targeting how much mana are you keeping up especially in blue like how much mana are you are you yeah, that's that's spell swindle mana like what are we what are we doing thank here? you <laughs> i can i can uh what's the one that bounces all your creatures to all attacking creatures to your hand and all that stuff uh, yeah what i mean you got to, you got river's rebuke you got um you got a um, cyclonic rift like you got so many other better options than this yeah, so I get, like I said, I get what it's trying to do. It protects, like, maybe some pieces that you think are uh, important if there's, like, a board wipe coming. But, like, okay. <laughs> One thing I've gathered is I feel like the common to uncommon to rare to mythic distinction is made based on how many lines of text because some of these mythics i was looking at it's like it's literally an it's a whole essay you got to unravel it and then and you got like the whole lines of text and, it, and it's a lot of words but i don't necessarily know if it's good uh, and my first card is actually right in line with that it has 
basically three separate paragraphs. And I don't know. And then there's a whole second side of the card. There's a thesis um, statement. It really is. <laughs> now, we got Jaren Corrupted Bishop. Now, I love this card. I am a fan of this card. But if I were, like, cracking packs and I opened it as a mythic, basically, it's got three completely separate abilities. When it ETBs or another non-token human you control dies, you lose a life and you get a human. So it can do some weird aristocracy stuff. Okay, we've seen that in plenty of cards. You pay two for target human to gain lifelink. Seems kind of random. Okay. At the beginning of your end step, if you have exactly 13 life, you can then pay six mana to transform Jaren. Now, we're not even going to talk about the backside because it's just never going to happen. You're never going to see that. <laughs> I built a deck around this. It is the most convoluted to get to 13 life. And then, honestly, if it was just get to 13 life, if you're at exactly 13, then it flips, whatever. Yeah. You got to pay six additional mana. At that point, I just get another six mana creature to cast whatever the <laughs> F I want. Like, the fact that and there's just three different abilities. One's Aristocrats. One's gaining you life because with lifelink. But why would you want to gain life when you got to get down to 13? It's just, there's so many things happening on this card. None of them seem, and like, honestly, as a weird, uncommon, super cool, as a rare, because I realize rarity is based in draft. Like, that's what it's all for. So those cards that seem terrible in other formats or powerful in draft, it's going to be mythic. I don't even understand how in draft this is going to be good, because if you're not exactly 13, if you're at 14, someone sees this, they're going to wait to hit you with two creatures. Like... Mm -hmm. And then you're not to have six mana on your upkeep and yeah, it's, I just, it's telegraphing everything. I was so confused. <laughs> I love the card because it flips into Ormondal, and Ormondal is like one of my favorite demons on my list of favorite demons, and it's a long list. It's way up there. Yeah. Love Ormond Daddy, but like you, you got to jump through some hoops, and it's just like yeah, I, I just why why if it was mythic, I think it should flip a little easier. Yeah, this, you see this thing coming like a whistling junkie, like it's like <laughs> please don't duck this punch. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so on my turn. So I was going through, you know, uh, war, uh, step brothers war, and I was looking at some of the mythics, and I, I opened a couple of packs, and I see, I seriously felt shame. And one of the cards that I opened was this card called In the Trenches. Now it's uh two in the white and it's in the trenches. It should be called in the toilet because outside of paper cuts on your butt, that's the best thing it's got for you. So basically it's an anthem effect for creatures for three. Okay, but then you pay six mana. <sighs> six mana at sorcery speed to exile a target permanent. Oh, and it's not gone for good. Oh hell no. It stays till it's still gone until this leaves the battlefield. How many enchantment removals? Is this thing got even hex proof? How many enchantment removals exist in these formats? Trick question. All of them. But wait, <laughs> there is more. You can only activate it once. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh! I didn't even read that part. <laughs> only once? So I gotta wait. Wait. I'm paying. Wait. You're paying I'm paying. That's a lot of mana. That's a lot of mana. I'm paying mana. 10 mana. <laughs> Six no, man. sorry, nine mana <laughs> to exile one permanent source to plowshare. Uh, 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 give me some, give me and sorcery some. Speed. And sorcery speed. Nine speed. mana sorcery speed to exile something that's going to come back. How about path to exile? <laughs> Are you kidding me? But your creatures get plus one, plus one. Shut you, up. You better, you better off just picking up the card and throwing it off the table. I, wait, I got to do like confetti. Wait, I got to pay six mana to remove it temporarily. Dumb. Wow. Like, like, that is one of the worst cards. Admit if we're missing something, let us know. It like, might be the worst card I've ever seen. I'm sorry. This is people who put their socks on in the pool. Like, what, what are you doing? What are you doing that right now? This legit might be the worst card I've ever seen. I, I passed the torch. I don't know. This this one that, while that is that while that is bad, I don't know. Let's evaluate and see if this one is worse. This is called uh Skitterbeam Battalion. All right, cute name. Anyway, I looked at the effect first and I was like Okay, this actually might make sense why it's a mythic. It has trample and haste. And when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you create two tokens that are copies of this thing. So I'm like, oh my God, it comes in with S3, like if you just cast this thing. Um, so I'm like, okay, so what's the what's the casting cost? Casting cost is nine. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this, this is about to be a, a behemoth, a Goliath, a juggernaut. This thing is a four four. <laughs> I'm paying nine mana for a four four. 
Three, four, four. Three, four. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why expropriate when you can get three, four, four? With it's trample and haste. And for nine mana. <laughs> with nine mana, you should be able to rule the world. Omniscience is 10. I'm like, what, what is it? Is... Hold on. It gets worse. So uh, when this set came out, they have, uh, I think it was Brothers War. Yeah. Uh, they have that prototype uh, little mechanic where mm-hmm. you can pay the alternate cost. It'll be cheaper. Okay. And the creature's going to be a little bit smaller. Okay. Yeah. But you still get the effect that it has on the bottom. But it comes in as a two-two if you do the alternate cost of five. It, it there, there are goblins that produce one ones just because. It, like, what are we doing here? What are uh, we doing here? I want to go to the next card. Go to the yeah, next card. Somebody. Okay. My second one is going to be talking about this a one. mythic from Kamigawa or Neon Dynasty. It's going to be <laughs> explosive singularity. I, I tried that's, to play this card. That's how, that's how this I is, try. I even try to look at it in the in the image of like draft and how good it would be in draft. And even then, I was kind of like, maybe. So it's eight and two red, so ten mana. Mm-hmm. And as an additional cost, you can tap any number of untapped creatures you control to reduce this cost by one. So if you tap eight creatures, it only costs two red, mm-hmm. and you can deal ten damage to any target. My question is, if you have eight creatures, you already want like if this is limited. I'm trying to look at it from limited's perspective. Why Smithy? Wow. You have eight creatures on board. How do you not already win? Like if you if you have that, that's basically half the creatures in your deck in play. You're probably doing more damage than ten. Also, it's a sorcery, so you can't even do the deal where it's like, oh. I'm going to hold all my creatures up on end step, hit you for 10. No, no, no. You still have to tap all your creatures out. So if it's a standstill, you're tapping mm. out, dealing 10 damage, and then getting just destroyed with the crack back. In Commander, there is no reason why you'd want to run this because it's just like, oh, I'm going to tap all my creatures down to deal 10 damage to you. It just, when burn at the stake exists and you can yeah. just blow anyone up, like. So I'll, wait, I will say. Are you paying 10 mana to do 10 damage? Yeah. 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 Shut up. So, so I'm going to give you the best case scenario for this card. And it's, uh, you know, the, the, the deck that I play, Magnus the Red? Yeah. yeah. The one that says, I have, based on the number of tokens I control, my instance is reduces, reduces the cost. Reduces the cost. Yes. So it's perfect in that scenario. Yeah. So in a very specific deck. But I feel like you could run this as a, just as a mythic. If I open this as a mythic, even if I was playing limited, I feel mm. like I would just be so sad. Because it's one of those, you can dream <laughs> that it's going to do something. You can hope it's going to do something. But in the end, you end up using all your resources. Honestly, if it was an instant, it'd be worth it in a lot of different varieties. But the fact that you need to tap down your board, you literally only cast this if your opponent's under 10 life. And in that very small circumstance, it's going to work. Otherwise, all your shields are down. And it's basically like you flick someone with a little fiery finger. And now they just want to hit you back with everything. Well, there's another way you use this. You remember in kids where you used to put the card in your bike tire to make it make that <laughs> sound? The spokes, the spokes, yeah, the, sp- yeah. the spokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use it for that. And, you, and when uh, you need to pick up like crumbs and stuff off the floor, you can use it as a little shovel to sweep yeah, it up too. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, when you try to get the food out to teeth, you can use the corn to pick it out too. No, yeah. I would say your barber might even use it to help edge you up a little Ooh, bit. You know yeah, get that, get that nice crisp line. Yeah. Maybe you want to give it to Gabby so he could get a charge. Either way, <laughs> outside of playing it in the actual game, ain't no use for this if you let it on actual fire you can use like a real fireball that is true that is true there so it has that, more context than that that's the thing okay so okay so going to my card <clears throat> this card is called one with the multiverse and it's fitting because the image is dr strange failing so <laughs> this card says for eight mana you may look at the top of your library. We've seen effects do that for one, maybe even two. Okay, fine. You may play a land, not an extra one. You may play a land and cast spells from the top of your library. Okay, again, we found better ones that do that for way less. During e- do- Once during each of your turns, not everybody else, yours, you may cast a spell from your hand or top of your library without paying its mana cost. This is eight. There are cards where I can do this for free. There are cards where I can do this for five manas or less. Why would I even do this? Why would I just pay two extra mana and just play uh, Omniscience? Why are we doing this to ourselves? I'm trying to think of where this may be beneficial. I'm even considering lesser formats. I'm struggling. I'm almost having a brain aneurysm doing that. But there's no way, shape, or form that you need to put this in your deck. You know what you need to put in your deck besides this? Nothing. An empty card slot. Because at least you'll be able to draw something better. <laughs> put it in a 98. Put it in a 99. <laughs> the 98. Exactly. This Your deck is now officially a 98 deck. You're welcome. <laughs> oh my god um wow that's that's 
I actually looked at that car and I was just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so I think we got the same car. Uh, no, we good. I got a backup. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. All right. So I, I so I'm gonna give this car just a little bit of grace, just no. a little bit. But it's called. I actually Dr- think it's good. It's all. It's called Draconic Draconic Destiny. Uh, one and two red. Uh, aura enchanted creature. It gets one and one has flying haste and plus Wait, one. This creature gets you, plus one. You read, oh. you read that wrong. That's not what it says. What it says doo doo dropper. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, it gets that plus one plus oh until end of turn. It's a dragon. Uh, when a creature dies, you return the aura back to your hand. Rinse and repeat. Do it again. So I, I love this card. I give it a little bit of grace because I see what it's trying to do. Especially if you can give a, a non flying creature flying. And also that haste will will help as well. And maybe even that one one will can you know do do some do some stuff do some stuff. But on the surface, I'm like if I'm playing red, I'm playing dragon, so I don't need this. Shut up and go away. I just <laughs> I love the fact that you just always can give haste. Also, the fact that it gets fire breathing and colorless is kind of cool because normally you can only use red mana. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I just like punching things too much, but I really like it. Now you're right. Maybe as a mythic, it's it's, it's as a, a mythic. I yeah. don't think it should be a mythic. Yeah, that's no, that's really that the there, that's yeah. really the only gripe I have. Like maybe 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 you're rare. Maybe you're rare. It's still a good card. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I um, assume this is a limited like bomb though, because yeah, all your creatures keep getting haste and you can just keep pumping them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm just like if I'm playing red, most of the times. This is me personally. I'm playing dragons. They fly already. Well, not oh. ju- not just that, but Red is known for haste, and you yeah. built a, f- a flame breathing deck. Weren't I you did, able- yes. Weren't you able to do this for one? You did an enchantment for yeah, one. Yeah, but it doesn't buff it at all. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Or it doesn't give the like plus one. Oh, I'm sorry. You missing a plus one plus one. <laughs> I'm sorry. In a fire breathing deck, because that matters. But what I will say is, if I open up a pack of Brothers War looking for a uh, Mishra, and that is staring me in the face, um, yeah, might cry a little. Bit. I'll be, I'll be sad. Might cry a little bit. Sadness goes on the stack. I have the sad. Sadness <laughs> resolves. <laughs> Actually, sadness is a state based effect. If you didn't know that, <laughs> split second and state based. No, there's no, there's no countering that. All right. What we got next, Derek? All right. Next, I'm going to go with Hostile Hostile. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hostile Hostile is a land from Midnight Hunt. It taps for colorless. And you can pay one, tap it to sack a creature, which as a sack outlet, okay, that part of it's cool. You put a soul counter on it. And if there are three or more soul counters on it, you can then remove the counters, untap it, and then transform it into the Creeping In, which is a 3-7 creature that whenever it attacks, <coughs> again, these lines of text, you exile a creature from your graveyard, and if you do, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is the number of creature cards exiled. So it's not like equal to power or anything. So the basically number every of creatures exile. Yeah. So yeah. whenever you attack, you got to exile one of your own things mm-hmm. and then, oh, they all lose one. Exile one of your own things. Now they all lose two. It's a three, seven with no evasion, no other abilities other than you can phase it out. I don't understand why this card is a mythic at any level. The backside, that's just not good. A three, seven that exiles your own things and drains one at a time. If that was the immediate be able to play it. Now, if, I don't, it, if it was like just based off the number, is it is it saying that based off the number of cards that you own in exile? Already? No, that you exiled with, with this? this. Oh, come on. Exiled with creeping mm. in. So you can't even like <clears throat> exile your own graveyard and do some crazy stuff. It's exile with creeping in. That is just a mess. The front side, okay, it's, it's a sack outlet, but there are so many potential sack outlets that you can run in a deck that this is like, the only way I can see running this is if it's like a, for sack outlet or like me, you just think the art's really cool. But the main problem, why is it mythic? There is nothing in limited. I don't see how this is any sort of limited bomb. You're killing your own creatures to eventually get a 3-7. Not really doing a ton there. Yeah, I just, it. this could be an uncommon and I wouldn't be surprised. I feel like it's one of like, you're in OG and Astral with all the flip cards. This mm-hmm. could have been like a, a random uncommon <coughs> flip card that they threw in. Unless I'm missing some, it just does not seem good. Well, there is a way that you can use that, and that's if somebody puts a gun to your head. <laughs> and also, I like to point out, it sounds like a real pervert when you turn the card over, over the creeping in. Get out yeah. of my house. <laughs> <laughs> nah, my house. Get out of my house. <laughs> uh, we don't do ghosts here. So, moving on. This is the king of the crap hill. I wish I could cuss. <laughs> This card, I saw it. I was like, okay, this is going to be amazing. And then I read it. And I was like, aha, uh-huh, what would be? No. Good God. So, Karn, when you hear the word Karn, it invokes fear mm-hmm. that is going to decimate you. And but your wallet. Is, exactly. <laughs> but this is Karn, the living letdown. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> it's a four better pissick place walker. Where plus one, it creates a ward power. It creates a power stone. Don't care. 
Number negative one, you pay any amount of mana. You can look at the top of your cards, and then you get to put one in your hand. Don't care. And then the negative seven ability, you get uh, you can tap an uh, emblem where you can tap untap artifacts to deal one damage. Who thought this was a oh good idea? God. Who thought this was a good idea? This ain't even common worthy. Yeah, can we remind everybody that I think Narset was an uncommon planeswalker? Yes, Narset almost broke the format. Like, there's a lot of uncommon planeswalkers that are very, very playable. And Narset's an extreme example. Like, just because but Narset almost got banned. Like, just because his name is Karn, you he doesn't think? need to be a myth. Does not yeah. need to be a myth. It's like he, it's like he had a deal with his agent, and the agent was like, "Look, we're getting hey. you on this card. It's kind of hey. crappy. He's like mythic or nothing. It's hey. like." I don't know if it deserves it. It's mythic or nothing. We only do mythics, baby. Yeah. yeah. Karn literally did this for the gas money. It's like yeah. certain names you hear that's supposed to invoke fear. Like Ulamog. Uh, what's uh, like Eugene. You know. This is the equivalent of like Nicolas Cage doing like one of the 700 movies he did last year. Where like, dude, you were like nominated for an Oscar or something at one point. What are you doing? Uh, uh, yeah. That's, that's what Karn is doing right now. He's in the Nick Cage. Like you selling out. Career. You selling out like $2 Nikes. I'm going to need you to you know, have some self-respect for yourself. Yeah. So oh you tell us, people, uh, what do you think about these cars, our evaluation? Are they good enough to be mythics? I don't know. Uh, and if you say, yeah, we got to ask you some questions. Yeah, I was about to say, the real question is, would any of you be happy opening any of these as your mythics? Because, oof. And if, I, you, and if any of these cards we mentioned, you better not go to hey, TCG. Good play. news is, these all are probably like 35 cents a piece. I can't imagine any of these are over a dollar. You, so you, bet, can, you better not go to TCG and get these. You, you go be, to TCG. You better not use our affiliate link. Wait, no, down no, no, the no, no. Use our affiliate link, but get better cards. <laughs> okay? You better not get any of these cards we mentioned. Otherwise, we're going to clown you. And then, why are you not buying this? We need you to look fresh. Go yeah. to the AM. Yeah. Because it's space. They can't hear you scream, but they don't want to see these cards either. <laughs> At all. Nope. Jeez. Oh, and also in the comments, we want you to guys to talk, tell us some yes. cards that we that you believe should not be mythics either. You yeah. know, we want to get yeah. this conversation. Yeah, expand going. our horizons and, and mm -hmm. let us know what's going on out there. So that we can all march up to Wizards of the Coast. Go to their research and development department and ask them why to their faces. Right. Gavin, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> Thank you guys <laughs> for joining us for this episode. Like and subscribe. But until next time, stay greasy. Thank you.